20 years ago, I, I visited Bucerias and, and in my mind, I was like, ooh, I could be here. I could be here. <laughs> My name is Jason. I am from Tacoma, Washington. In 2001, I did a little travel trip. It was supposed to be for three months. Came to Bucerias. Three months turned into one year. Between the food culture and the people, the genuine hospitality, it was just so welcoming and uh, I just felt instantly comfortable and knew I, I wanted to spend more time here. I've been pondering about Mexico, wanting to be here, and in the back of my mind for the last 20 years, I've been wanting to make this move. And so in the last couple of years, I kind of started stepping up my thought process and learning about you know, what it takes to, to come here. And we'll say in the last two years, I made a decision that I want to move forward, moving to Mexico and transitioning into a new life as it's good timing as I'm single right now, and I uh, had an opportunity to sell my house at a, you know, at a decent spot as the market was going up, and uh, so it was a perfect transition for me to come here, and so I made it happen. So my friends and family had mixed reactions of me moving to Mexico. Uh, I think some people kind of rolled their eyes and just think like, you know, it's the popular thing to do, while others were you know, thinking what I was thinking. It's like, you know what, do it. Life is short. You know, if that one makes you happy, do it. And so I generally was, is mostly support. So I made up my mind to move to Mexico after doing a lot of research and due diligence. And I drove down with a car full, packed, full of stuff and with me and my dog. And it was about a five and a half day trip. Uh, we did three days in the States and uh, two and a half in Mexico. So. Um, my last day was on the border of uh, the United States side at Nogales. And then I spent two more days going down, two and a half more days going down, and uh, the trip was great. My advice for people to drive into Mexico would be just to do due diligence. Be prepared. Don't just wait till the last minute. You know, think of the questions you, you may have ahead of time and go on the appropriate sites and forums. That kind of helps the, the fear of the unknown. Drive during the day. You can see the roads better and it's just easier. Don't strain yourself. You know, everyone's got their own little deal. Some people like to drive for 12 hours, but I did uh, seven to nine hours, stayed during the day, and it was everything turned out great. So I'm renting currently in Taralta 1, which is on the north side of Bucerias on the east side of the highway. It's a small community of townhouses. Uh, I'm not sure how many townhouses here are here. No pool, but uh, I currently have a beautiful place I'm renting that's got a rooftop deck that's just amazing. And uh, there's various three, four dog parks inside of Taralta One. So Tacoma, who is my dog, my, my right-hand man, he's transitioned well down here. There is, it is gated, we'll say. Uh, so you gotta announce yourself when you come through unless you're a resident. Really enjoy it here. It's a mix of locals, and expats. Very dog friendly and so that works well with me and uh, I've really enjoyed my time here in Toronto One. This house in particular is it's been great though it's just me and my dog but it doesn't live huge so you would think three bed two and a half bath is too big but it's really not. Very close to the central part this, the, of, of Bucerias so I can walk to the, the central in 10 minutes. I can walk to the beach in 10 minutes if I want to. Um, I can be in the local neighborhoods in five minutes. I'm, I'm right here. There's Toronto 2, there's also Toronto 3. They each have their own HOA and some are a little more strict than others. Uh, Toronto 1, where I live, is pretty lax. Sometimes there can be some loud music that may go on past midnight but we're in Mexico and they like to, very festive, right? Uh, it's been nothing crazy. Uh, since this is townhouse living, we're kind of stacked on each other. So my back patio has got five other back patios that we'll say are adjacent to my back patio. So if we're all out in our back patios, I can hear all five conversations, right? 
My family had a, a Vietnamese restaurant in Tacoma. I've also fished in Alaska for herring and salmon. I worked for Coca-Cola for a couple years. I've done construction for a few years, you know, as a licensed massage practitioner for a few years. I've done all kinds of things in my life. I work remote with the property management company. The name of the company I work for is uh, North Point Property Services. Internet's great, just in case anyone's wanting to know. Signal, the signal is fantastic, and so that gives me the ability to be flexible as my work is flexible, and uh, it gives me time to go to the beach or to go out to have dinner with friends or play pickleball, which I do throughout the week. Zero two one. Pickleball here in Bucerias is fantastic in the, in the area in general. It's just huge, everyone plays. It is, a, it is a lot of fun. My home court is the Refuge of Hope and most of our money goes back to the Refuge of Hope to help out their cause. Uh, the people who play there are a lot of fun. It's good exercise, we laugh every time we play. It's good uh, competition, fun competition. And at the same time, it's a social, you know, a network of friends that I've become to have a new group of friends and through them, you know, we, we go and have a beach day or we'll go meet up at a restaurant for breakfast or, or go, go, go on a hike. That's where my network of friends have, have started. But my intent was to buy. And so I've just been scouring of where I want to live, you know, and I, I have my price points not the biggest, so I can't just go buy any place. And so it's, it's been taking my time and finding what I think fits my budget and what is the best return of investment for, for the property that I can afford. I finally kind of gone all kind of directions and I kind of finally found a spot that I've been able to purchase. So this house in Toronto, three the townhouse, is just like the same setup as here. Three bed, two and a half bath townhouse, uh, maybe a few less townhouses in Toronto three than Toronto one. It's uh, renovated, so it's just got more square footage of living space. I do not have a rooftop deck, which is a bummer because as they don't allow that in Toronto three, but the owner built a very nice cozy deck on the second floor coming off one of the bedrooms. Fall and winter, this is all green. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think when we originally saw that it was a lot more green, but since it's becoming dry season now, it's Every, everything is brown right Everything's now. Everything's browning out right now, but yeah. uh, pretty nice. Uh, we were up on the roof here last week and there was a couple cows that were grazing right over here. Pretty peaceful back here. I can already envision the cup of coffee. It's going to be good. So the cost of my place in Toronto 3. I think when all said and done, it's going to be just under 270. And so that's uh, for that three bedroom, two and a half bath. Uh, you know, there's different price points in Toronto three, Toronto two. Uh, this one right now is a little on the higher end, I'd say, of uh, a lot of places that are for sale right now. But then again, it's been fully remodeled and it's got, you know, nice Perota cabinets on the inside, nice mosaic tile. You know, it's got a lot of touches that um, that I like. All right, so there's one thing you just noticed? Yeah, what it's gotta that? go. What's this? The Eye of Sauron. Oh yeah. That doesn't belong in the bedroom. It's kind of scary. It's, it's gotta go. <laughs> bye bye. That's gotta go. This is weird. <sighs> so. This is not feng shui. No. The ISR on is not feng shui. You got any sage in your pocket we can burn at this moment? You know, because uh... There's a lot of building going on right now and contractors are hard to get. And this owner took great love and care in this property. And I can immediately see that, feel that. Got nice tile, got good colors, and it's well maintained, well cared, very turnkey. That put me at ease area is just very walkable amenities are right there so i can walk and do everything really you know walk into town go get food uh, go to the corner store if needed it's a very desirable neighborhood got a pool which don't hurt it doesn't hurt anybody i almost bought in toronto too and it was like 129 
you know, it needed a whole ton of stuff. And then how long is that going to take? Luckily, she pulled out. I had made an oh, offer at okay. 125. Yeah. And she pulled out. Okay. And she had this thing on the market for a year. Yeah. So, anyways. Really yep. Yeah, and I looked at another one on Toronto 3 that was 220, but yeah. it needed all new, you know, upgrades. Advice I would give to someone house hunting, you know, take your time, take your time. There's a lot of neighborhoods to learn, a lot of houses to see. Everyone's got different wants and needs. And so I think time is your friend, sort of, because things are going fast here. So you got to jump when it's time to jump. And so just be prepared for that scenario. If you see something and your gut's calling for it, you know, obviously go for it. We got one life to live and don't second guess. And, and, and you know, because you always second guess. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, I've said that a million times. And so that's one of the reasons why I decided to, to take this gamble, quote unquote, calculated gamble, and uh, sell my property up north and come down here and, and just make it happen. Pitching myself, pitching myself. This has been a, a culmination of many things, you know, of many years getting to this point. And uh, it fully hasn't hit me yet though. Um, but it's a very exciting moment and I'm sure the next couple days it'll be even more so as it's a reality and it has happened. All right, it's me, Paul, back on camera. Thanks for watching today's video and a special thanks to Jason for uh, sharing his journey with all of us. And one thing I really admire about Jason is that he did a ton of research. Uh, he did his homework before moving to Mexico. Uh, he said that he had a trifecta of resources that he used. Uh, one of those was moving to Mexico. So thank you for saying that, Jason. Another one was his real estate agent who he raved about. So if you guys want me to put you in contact with his real estate agent, send me an email, info at movingtomexi.co. And the third resource, I'm gonna save that for the very end of this video. And I'm always looking for new stories. So if you guys have any ideas, or if you wanna be featured on movingtomexi.co, like Jason, like Karen, like Matias y Mabella, send me an email, info at movingtomexi.co. If you guys would like to support the channel just a little extra, you can buy me a coffee. I'll put the link in the description below. Keep me caffeinated, keep me making cool videos like this one. Now, Jason had a trifecta. It was moving to Mexico, it was his real estate agent, and then it was this. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Adios. So the Mexico relocation guide in Mariana has been a huge, huge deal for me. It's basically a book with many chapters and it covers all topics. And she actually has her own Facebook group as well. So you can ask the members of the community questions. And so it just, it covers everything and any questions you may have, Mariana is quick to answer with just phenomenal information that's accurate. And she has contacts all over Mexico, wherever you may be living that she can link you up with for different aspects of car insurance, health insurance, you know, uh, everything. Between those three, the, the trifecta of uh, information and just good people in all three, all three places has really helped me. And if any of you have any story ideas or video ideas, I'm open to hear that too. An ant just bit my foot.